Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and possibly reanimated corpses, because I don't know what you guys do in your spare time. You know, you might have a hobby of grave robbing, go out there, you know, with your shovel, use your magical revitalization powers, and then boom, you reanimate a corpse, and you decide to have him sit down and open up a YouTube account and subscribe to my channel. A subscription's a subscription. I'm not gonna complain. I just want to cover my bases here. Okay, so, uh, moving on with the, uh, six nights of Horroween, the six darkest moments in all of One Piece. Uh, yesterday we covered the tragic backstory of Charlotte Linlin going all cannibalistic tacular on her family. Uh, this this episode is, I, I don't know if you can tell from the thumbnail who we're going to be talking about. Oh gee! Which character in the One Piece series has a massive gaping hole right in his chest? Or her chest? I, I, I don't know who this is. No, of course it is Portgus the Ace, uh, Fire Fist. Yes, yeah, so we're just gonna put him right here and no, that's not right. We have to put him. No, that's still not. Okay, that's good right there. Okay. Um, all right, so it's about right at this point that I should mention exactly what my criteria is for this because uh, obviously they're the six darkest moments, but like I said last time, there's a lot of dark moments in One Piece, okay? And you know, even with yesterday's video, I had a lot of people that were like, whoa, hold on, vampire teching. We're starting off with Charlotte Linlin? Yeah, that, that was a pretty dark one. How can we go? up from here, or down from there, or, you know, whatever the context is. Um, a lot of them, when I came to deciding, you know, which one is darker than the others, I went by just like the sheer number of how many people were directly affected by this because yeah big mom's backstory it's pretty tragic but at the end of the day she only ate like what like a dozen kids plus her her grandmother essentially her benefactor i mean that's that's only like a baker's dozen right i mean there's a lot of dark stuff that's happened in one piece that's affected a lot of people um also i also took into consideration like how much time passes, you know, like, uh, Brooke's backstory is going to be on here. I don't think it's a spoiler to throw that out there. I'm not going to tell you which number it is, but Brooke's backstory, you know, spent 50 years on a boat just floating around in a dark sea. That, that, you got to chalk that up kind of higher. So I had to take, like, numbers into effect. Like, how many people are affected by the dark thing that's happening? How much time do they have to deal with the dark thing happening? So, yeah. Um, now, in the case of Porcus the Ace, um, of course, his death does not just affect himself, uh, because he is <laughs> Are we good? Do I have to reiterate? I feel like some people out there didn't quite get it. I'll do it again. Alright, hold on. <laughs> alright, alright, we're good? Okay. The thing about Ace's death that makes it dark is because... There is so much freaking hope that Oda dangled in front of our faces here. We have Ace, captured by Blackbeard and handed over to the Marines, about to be executed at Marine Ford. Yeah, yeah, they might have the entire force of the Marines at their disposal. They might have all of the admirals and vice admirals, giant squad, the seven warlords with uh, Sans Jimbe and, of course, Crocodile gathered there. And uh, you'd like, oh, wow, that's a pretty good force. But on the opposite end, you not only have the main character, Ace's brother Luffy, but you also have an entire uh, legion of some of the strongest characters ever introduced in the series. We got Crocodile. We got Whitebeard. We got, well, Marco and, like, you know, Jean Bay and um, uh, Ivankov. They were all introduced, like, right around Marineford. But still, really powerful characters. And so, you have this, like, Whitebeard's a Yonko, for God's sake. Not only just him and his crew, which is giant in its own right. He has all the division 
division commanders and all the people working under him, but also he brings an entire fleet, not just one or two ships, an entire fleet of all of his allies from the New World. These are New World pirates here, and this is back before, you know, we were introduced to the New World proper yet. We, we, like, whenever someone brings up New World pre-time skip, that's like a whoa moment. That's a holy crap, these guys know what they're doing kind of shit, all right? So, with that with that being the setup, with that being the battle, and then this big epic war breaking out, I need to ask you a serious question. I'm sure there's plenty of you that did think this, but I just want to get a gauge. If you were reading One Piece at this point in the manga, you know, when this was occurring, I think it was back in like 2010, did you honestly think that that arc was going to end with Ace dying? Because I didn't. I'm sure there's plenty of you that did. But you have to understand all that hope that's like, oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's Luffy, man. Luffy's here. He's the main character, and he's going to save his brother, and he's got freaking Whitebeard backing him. That moment where Luffy and Whitebeard are standing next to each other, we're going to save Ace. Crocodile, Jinbei, the Savior, Buggy, all those freaking New World Pirates, they're there, man. They don't need to destroy every single Marine on the island, but they can manage to rescue Ace, and they do! That's the thing! They do! They do manage to rescue Ace. Luffy manages to get up to him. Mr. Three's there. He uses his wax. They unlock his handcuffs. He gets freed and everything's like, yes, yes, we did it. We did it. What? No? Huh? Oh my God. What the hell? <laughs> that is, okay. That is not only crushing to Luffy and everybody that was there. You know, all of the Whitebeard pirates like Marco and Jozu, people that knew Ace for years. You know, everybody that was there that was trying to save him, they, they failed. But it's not only crushing to them, it's crushing to us as, as the people reading it. Because people like me genuinely thought he was going to make it out. All right? But he didn't. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, yesterday when I did the video... Um, I think I brought up, like, I compared Big Mom, you know, eating people whole, like, you know, comparing it to, like, a real-world scenario, and I, I think I used hippos as the example, like, you know, you're not very likely to get eaten by a hippo, and some people actually correct me on that, it's like, Matt, you, you, you do realize that, like, hippos in Africa are, like, one of the leading causes of death, you know, people, hippos eat people more than any other animal in Africa. And I'm like, oh, okay, I mean, I guess if you compare it to the rest of the world, like all 7 billion people, your odds are probably not very likely to get eaten by a hippo. But uh, my point is this, the reason I'm bringing this up now is, what exactly are your odds from getting capped off by a giant 7-foot magma demon? Huh? What are the odds of that happening? Oh, 35 to 1. That is, oh, okay, that is... Oddly higher than I thought it was going to be. Huh, okay, you guys be careful out there. Gee, 1 in 35, really? Yeah, you guys, if anybody that lives next to a volcano, you might want to, you might want to move. Now, the only reason I'm putting this so low on the list, and that's something else, you know, it's like, oh, he's only number five, um, is because, yes, it was a dark moment, it really shocked everybody uh, when it did occur, and then, of course, f right after the death of Ace, we have the death of Whitebeard. And, of course, the whole introduction of, you know, Blackbeard being able to steal Devil Fruit abilities. And then we have that, which is a, uh, one of the lowest moments, one of the darkest moments, both figuratively and literally in the One Piece series. The Blackbeard's darkness begins to kind of swell and take over this new era and, and cover the battlefield. And then also here, the death of all the, you know, Whitebeard's gone and Ace is gone. It's a pretty dark moment. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And it's that... Ace's passing showed Luffy, and, and this is also for Luffy, he has to deal with like post-traumatic stress and, and depression from his brother dying, which I still don't think he's over 100%. Um, and we're probably going to get into that more with Wano. So that's also very dark for Luffy, he gets sent to some, you know, messed up places. But eventually, Luffy manages to climb out of that pit and he uses Ace's death as a motivation to get stronger and to train with Rayleigh and to reunite with his friends after two years to continue on their journey because that's what Ace would have wanted. So, very dark moment as it actually happened in the series and you look back on it now, this is a dark moment that's certainly very sad as well. 
but getting beyond that initial shock moment, things are improving because Luffy is stronger now, and he's carrying on his brother's will. And then, of course, we discover that Sabo is still alive as well. Sabo consuming the Mara Mara no Mi, gaining the powers to, you know, gaining Ace's ability to control fire, so he carries on his legacy as well. Um, Ace is gone, and he's never coming back. It's never going to happen. I really hope Oda doesn't even do, like, a Jedi spirit kind of thing, you know, where, like, Luffy's in the middle of a really tough fight against Kaido, and then, like, freaking... Freaking uh, uh, Ace appears wearing a, a long flowing robe and is like, Luffy, you must aim for his... You know, I, I hope that doesn't... I hope it doesn't go down that way. Oda doesn't do, like, the ghost Ace thing. We might get a flashback of him still. We've kind of already gotten flashbacks of Ace during, you know, Wano with Otama and everything. Um, but yeah, Ace is gone. He's never coming back. But Luffy carries on his will. Uh, Sabo certainly carries on his will uh, in a literal sense as well with his devil fruit. So... That's why I put this rather low on the list. It affected a lot of people. It shocked the hell out of the fandom when it did occur. Uh, when Big Mom ate her family, it was kind of something that Oda could not show explicitly. He, he couldn't show that, you know? It was just kind of like, uh, to the point where when that chapter dropped, a lot of people were even confused of, was that really what happened to her? Like, did she really eat all of her, like, was that what happened? Um, but no, with the death of Ace, it's right out there. Uh, Oda had this plan for a while, but he, he made it, he did it in such a way that really surprised, I think, the majority of the fandom. Like I said, I'm sure there's a few of you that thought, oh no, Ace was going to die at the end of this arc, 100%, I know this is going to go down, but, you know. All right, well, <laughs> that's, that's number five, all right? There's four more after this. Are you are are your spirits beginning to break? Just a little crack, just a little bit. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. We'll we'll take a hammer to it. We'll make this work. Don't worry. All right. Y'all have a good night now, partners. Cowboy Vampire Tekken signing out.